Let's get into it. I would argue I am not someone that is in any way a professional in terms of mental health. I am not a doctor of any kind. I am no one's therapist. I've never been anyone's therapist. But I do want to make it clear that I am able to actually still help you. The goal for me isn't to... The goal for me isn't to... How can I explain this? To diagnose you. It's not to to diagnose you. It's to open up the conversation so that you may be willing to be diagnosed. As in, talk to me and I pray that your ass go seek help. That's really what I hope, okay? I started off like that because it needs to be said that way. I don't want there to be any confusion about why it is that I do Mental Health Monday. It's important to me that people speak their mind about anything. Say what's on your mind. Because the very second that you don't, you're going to start holding people accountable for not knowing it. Ain't nothing wrong with more light. I'm gorgeous in the light. I understand fully that this world is fucked up. That's an easy thing to say. It's It's a fucked up world, right? It's so fucked up that it requires a disclaimer. <laughs> Bam. This is fun. This stream is intended for 18 plus viewers. There may be strong language present. I only represent my views, statements, or opinions. Statements, views, and opinions made by chat or other players in stream are theirs alone and are not a reflection of Contrama, Contrama Gaming, or its affiliates. Speaking of which, I'm proud of myself. I actually have some affiliates now. People that I call my stream team. And I, and I love them very much. And I hope that they show their ass today. I really hope they do. Everybody got to work and do different things, yes. But I'm hoping that, you know, we can converge. I really, I realize now that I have a very short temper. I have a very short temper. And it's not because I'm doing something right or wrong or whatever. It's me understanding who I am. It's me learning who I am. I don't have a lot of tolerance for nonsense because I've been dealt a shitty hand. And that shitty hand comes from a place of I expect people to behave certain ways. I expect people to behave certain ways. And it's not because I told them to is because they know they need to. It's not because I'm right. It's because it is right. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell you, hey, you're on fire and you're covered in gas. If you run really fast, you'll put yourself out. I'm not going to tell you that because that's not right. Even if I want to be right, that shit is wrong as information. Somebody's liable to die because of that. And I don't want to be the hand in which somebody got hurt where all I have to do is shut the fuck up, right? But I don't want to shut the fuck up when I clearly see a problem. It's hard for me to fucking compartmentalize that. And it's hard for me to reconcile that. I love y'all motherfuckers so much. Y'all don't even realize it. I love y'all so much. Chat the world society. I love y'all so much. And I love y'all from a place of motherfucker, we could do better than this. I'm tired of the man versus woman debates. I'm tired of the man. All men are like, but those same people saying all men are like are only chasing like 10% of the men. Like what the fuck? All men who? You mean at 164 million men in America alone? All of us fucked up. Every single one of us. 10% of 160 
of 160 million is 16 million. You telling me that you only value out of 160 million, 16 million people. That's where your heart is at. That that's where you at. Aren't aren't we a bit sick and tired of being victims? Aren't we tired yet? I ask that knowing full well that we're probably not. I ask that knowing full well. Why do we do that? What are we expecting people to do? How are we expecting people to behave? How are we expecting people to actually receive us? How, how are we doing that exactly? I understand fully. I understand fully what this world is really about. When we're talking about the state, the the state of the mind, we must also discuss the things we are willing to accept. The reason why that's important is because a lot of us are not willing to receive the energy that we portray. We demand that people treat us a certain way, but then we don't actually want people to treat us that way. No, we claim we want equality. No, we want preferential treatment. We claim that we want fairness. No, we want preferential treatment. We claim that we want love. No, you want someone to be your slave. You claim that you want somebody to be your partner. No, you want a yes man. We are asking for things we really don't want. And we do this shit regularly. And no one gives a fuck because no one wants to... No one wants to be the voice of reason. And every time the voice of reason shows itself, the first thing that people do is denounce the voice of reason. They denounce the voice of reason. They go against, they rage against the machine. They go against everything that could be considered common fucking sense. And it's not because it's right or wrong. It's because of the fact that after all is said and done, no one is willing to be honest. Okay. What that means is if you know that you're a man and you want pussy, say that. If you know that you are a woman and you want money, say that. But do also understand that you may not get that. You just might get your ass embarrassed. You might just get played the fuck out. You might just look like an idiot at the end of it all. All because you didn't want to do your due diligence and earn it. But y'all don't hear me though. Y'all don't hear me. And that's coming from an honest place. Okay. I think about the amount of women that I've had in my life. I think about the amount of women I've had in my life on my dick and, you know, just in my mind on my heart, whatever. The amount of women that I've dealt with. It is significantly outweighed by the amount of women that said no. Significantly. Significantly. And no, I'm not saying that to be cute or some shit. I'm saying that to be 100% realistic. 100% of the time, I fail 90% of the time. Now, how do you think I'm going to feel as a man when all of the women, including the 10% I got, think that all men are a failure or, or, or ain't shit or whatever phraseology you want to use? How do I as a man reconcile that when you're showing me that I'm not as important as I should be, but then more importantly, you're telling me how I should view myself? You're telling me what you demand of me as a man, but you're not willing to accept the role that you should take as a woman if you're demanding that of a man. That doesn't make any sense. 
And that's coming from a place of truly being confused. I don't understand it because it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like you actually want men to care. It seems like you want men to pander to you. That's completely different from a man loving you. Okay. You want a man to feed you into feed into your world and feed into how you move and think and act. But you're not even willing to address the fact that most men are deemed irrelevant unless they can provide something. Now, there's a lot of people out here saying, oh, men are just mad because women have standards now. No, the fuck y'all don't. No, the fuck y'all don't. Not by a huge margin, y'all don't. And I'm not even saying that to be funny. I'm saying that because you are fucking delusional. You're delusional to think that women's standards have been, you know, just jumped up here, but they're still living down here. You're not going to get results. And I'm not saying that to be, I'm not saying that to be facetious either. Statistically, the single mother rate didn't slow down a lick. The unmarried rate did not slow down a lick. The, the debt for child support. Oh, that took a slight plunge. But I believe that that has a correlation with the amount of abortions that have taken place. 60 what? 65 million? No, 63.5 million. If I recall the number correctly, I know it's at least 60 million and up. Abortions that occurred since Roe v. Wade. Like it, the numbers speak for themselves. They don't, numbers don't yield potential. They don't yield potential. They yield results. Okay. They tell you the truth. But the reason why I'm sick of that fucking conversation is because no one is being honest about what they want in the first place. No one is being genuine about what it is that they want in the fucking first place. Everybody's walking out. Oh, well, I'm a boss B and I can do this and I deserve this. And the, and only the top tier men can handle me. But you're telling yourself that you're not even telling that to the men. You're not even willing to tell that to the men that aren't accepting you. You're telling yourself that they aren't validating your statement. Now, a person's going to be like, well, maybe they don't know any better, but maybe they don't know any better. Maybe they have bad taste. Let's assume they do. Who told you that you could validate yourself? You can't. There's not one ounce of success on this planet that didn't come with a team. No such thing. So to keep going, oh, I'm this and I'm that and blah, 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 is delusional. But that also applies to the men that also applies to the men that do not wish to do better. Okay. You can't expect a woman to give you everything. If you yourself are a sack of shit, you can't. I even went as far, man, let me tell you something. I even went as far as telling my girl, yo, I know my, I know where I'm at in life and I feel as though you deserve better than me. Not because I'm a bad person, not because I'm a, not because I'm bad, not because I'm abusive, not because I ever hurt her, cheated, lied, anything. I've always been open, honest, and clear with her because she deserves that 100%. I've told her if she wanted to find somebody who was going to provide her a better life, I would suggest she deal with it and date them because that would be the right thing to fucking do. Because I think you deserve more. And in my current situation, I can't provide that. And it's all because I was in a car accident like fucking four years ago. Fucked my whole life up. Easy. Can't even do regular shit without a struggle now. That's bullshit. Okay. But yet she. But yet she still actively chooses to deal with me because she ultimately has the say in who enters her life. She ultimately has that say. 
I would rather be in a situation where I was able to make more choices than what I can currently make. That way, when I choose her, it's not a matter of proximity, but actual choice to make the choice genuine. Now, a person would think, well, if it's already working and why challenge it is because it challenges the depths of me as a man growing up in a society. And I've always been told that I don't matter. I don't matter. My feelings don't matter. My my accomplishments don't matter. I've been told that for a long time. My fault, not my accomplishments. Nothing I do matters unless it's backed by. Unless it's backed by. Okay? So that means that if, oh, oh, wow, you're a good person. You feed the homeless. Do you have your own house? No. So what are we talking about here? Like, you got you got other things to worry about. I could be like, yo, I just wanted to make sure that people who had it even worse than me were doing somewhat decent. Yeah, but you basically right where they at. So why would you? It's like we as a society are personalizing hierarchy. Right? We're personalizing hierarchy. I totally fucking understand that, yes, there are some people that literally just will never get it. There are some people that will always have a rough time in life, yes. But in the same breath, I also do recognize in spite of that difficulty, there's still a certain thing in the man or in the men that's making them feel like they're irrelevant. And it hurts, man. It fucking hurt. It genuinely hurts. And they go, they go, my girl, right there. Cake says hello, chat. When we're talking about the subtle reality of things, we also have to consider the not so subtle reality of things, okay? What that means is you know full and damn well, you know full and damn well that we don't have. Oh shit, first time chat from a viewer, Shadow Rena. What's going on, Shadow Rena? Thank you for visiting the House of Contrama. Would you care to follow and enter the house? That would be nice. <laughs> when I think about the amount of headache and heartache that comes with being a man, in today's society, many of us are talking. Hello, what's up? I do follow, just haven't been able to catch a stream yet, but I'm here now. Hell yeah, I'll take it. I will happily take it. I will happily take it. I'm grateful, 100,000%. But yeah, this right here, I'm just doing a mental health check-in. I need to see if people out here, that I need to see if people are actually all right. Help me understand something, right? Help me understand. Because I'm not the smartest person. Maybe I'm not, maybe I missed the mark somewhere. It's plausible. It's very possible. I don't know everything. But what I fucking do know is that we are personalizing hierarchy, right? We are personalizing hierarchy, right? Now, what that means is that I am a man in this position. I am now going to consider myself the top of this hierarchy. If I am at the top, then that means that inherently everything else is beneath me. Even if proven to be equal, personal hierarchies. The reason why I'm so devastated by the idea of a personal hierarchy is because no one wants to admit that they might be at the bottom of it. How about that? Oh, and today I'll be eating a bunch of trail mix. That shit looks delicious. Yes, it does. This shit is so delicious.
after a while, it just feel like you just, it feels like you're chewing a horse hoof. Just a chomping, just hum, hum, hum with fat ass, hum. <laughs> trail makes, <laughs> trail makes me bust it. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> No one wants to admit that they might be at the bottom of their own personal hierarchy. No one wants to admit that they might be at the bottom of their own personal hierarchy. Everybody thinks that their outcomes are going to automatically supersede everyone else's. But the one thing you should know about these kinds of things is that that's not fucking true. It gets to a point where people don't want to acknowledge that they may be at the bottom of their personal hierarchy. They walk out into life assuming that the world will be given to them on a silver fucking platter. How can you expect for the world to put you and your aspirations on a silver fucking platter while you treat the world like the scum beneath your toes? I I don't get it. Help, help, help. How that make sense? You don't actually want somebody to have your back. Okay. You want the right, you want the right to behave the way you want to behave with absolutely no consequences. And the minute that somebody calls you out on it, you want to call them all kinds of F word, N word, B word. But see, here in the house of trauma, I need to talk to y'all in order for it to make sense. I can't babysit y'all. They will call a man a faggot. They will call a man a faggot for not adhering to the overwhelming pandering of the Derek Jackson types. They will call a man a bitch. They will call a man a bitch for standing against their personal hierarchy. I'm the top. I'm the boss, bitch. I'm the top. I'm the queen. I'm this or whatever. They will nullify that man by calling him a faggot and a bitch. And they don't let him be black because then he's every bit of a nigger with the, with the hard ER. That's the kind of world we're living in. But no one wants to fucking admit it. No one wants to be honest about it. And this is coming from a real hurt place because it's like, what the fuck did I do to you? What the fuck did I do to you personally to make you be that mad at me to call me out my name three ways from Sunday? But God forbid I turn any of those titles on you, then it becomes a problem. Then 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 it's automatically phobic, 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 phobic everywhere. How does that work? How can I be phobic when I'm addressing a... Pro How can I be phobic of anything if I'm not afraid of it, number one? But then number two, why do I automatically have to be listed as phobic just because you're deciding to put what you think is right on my world or in my head or in my space? And we're not talking about the hierarchy. No, we're talking about your hierarchy in the middle of a generalized society, right? So you have your own hierarchy, but now you're walking up my little pyramid. You're walking up my little pyramid. And then you're deciding, hey, well, I'm going to say things about your life and they're automatically going to be right because I don't like what you said. You just gonna have to not like what the fuck I said and go fuck yourself. That's what that's just what's gonna have to be the case. Know why? Because when you want to say what you want to say, whether it be destructive, constructive, or whatever, you demand that people respect your opinion because you're you, and that's just how it is. I say go fuck yourself if I I say go <laughs> go f yourself if I get called names. But see, here's the thing about it though, uh, B. Right. That's the thing about that. When we're talking about names being called, it's bigger than just, you know, faggot bitch nigger. It's bigger than that. We're also talking about, oh, your mama must not have loved you. Do you know your daddy? Things like that 
are what create these weird ass personal hierarchies. Who are you to dictate who or what I am because you don't like what I say? That don't make sense. Who gave you that power other than you? And the answer is not a fucking soul. That's just what that is. People don't want to be honest. People don't want to be forthcoming. People don't want to be genuine about what's going on. And then they want to fuck everybody else in the process. Like it's not our problem. It's not our problem that you don't know how to get settled in life. And that goes for me too, because I'm not settled in life, but you know who I blame? Me. Because my decisions got me here. And 90% of those decisions revolved around the fact that I could have just kept my dick to myself and been perfectly fine. But nope. Oh, you're going to get coochie. Don't worry about it. You would be shocked. You would be shocked at how fast I respond to a yes. I've been told no so many times. It's crazy how fast I respond to a yes. Then, uh, hey, um... You, you kind of cute. Um, can, 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 can we dance? Uh, the, I would get the head, the forward look in the face. I look down and then I look back up and then a, nah, I'm good. Yikes. I just got called the fucking peasant. I just got called the sky beneath her toes. I just got called some wild shit and she didn't even have to use those words. But when I watch that same girl go around a party trying to dance with this boy or that boy, I was like, damn, how come I don't get the yes? Is it because of my deficiency? Is it because I'm disgusting? Maybe I need to work out. Maybe I need to uh, cut my get, go get a haircut right quick at 11, 13 p.m. Maybe I should. <laughs> maybe I should. Uh you know, wear better cologne. Maybe I should get better clothes. I immediately downgraded myself in hopes of trying to come to an answer about why this one girl out of 160 million of them, roughly, why I was looking for her validation. But I was trying to justify who I was to this girl just in that moment because I felt hurt because I'm like damn she just told me no and I ain't even do nothing I just asked nicely I thought asking nicely got you things but that's but that's when they came up with the phrase you get more you get more flies with honey than you do with them with vinegar I wasn't her honey pot and I didn't know how to I didn't know how to properly understand that so fast forward a couple of years later now I'm on my very first girlfriend cutting school to go get coochie because I have been told no so many times I went crazy for the yes I was 16 she was 19 matter of fact I was when I first met her I was like 14 that would have made her 17 then the second time I saw her I was like 15 that would have made her like 18. We kissing at the party and shit. I ain't think nothing of it because I got told no so many times that I didn't know how to act when I got the yes. I didn't have a sense of personal hierarchy because there was no such thing like that for a nigga that don't do nothing besides get told no. There's no such thing. I don't get to be, oh, oh I'm big dog in this building. I don't get to be that. I don't get to be that while I'm getting told no. There's no such thing at all. I promise you it's not. It is not me being hurt or bitter. Man, my father made a good point to me. He said, you worried about it. You worried about a girlfriend too quick. You're going to have so much pussy thrown at you. You ain't even going to know what to do with yourself and how right he was. But in the same breath, the thing that I wanted wasn't even coochie. I wanted companionship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I didn't want Gucci. I wanted companionship. I wanted to actually be with someone and actually love into them and develop with them and build with them. And I didn't even know why I wanted it. It was because I had gotten told no so many times 
that I had no choice but to be reactive when I finally got my yes. I went crazy for that yes. Okay? Imagine imagine being Manti Teo and not getting picked in the first round draft. Getting that yes means more than anything. Getting that yes means more than anything. And, and just related to that, Renaya tu, Tuiasasopo needs his whole ass beat thoroughly. He really does. Because that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. If you don't know what I'm talking about, on Netflix, there's a special called Untold, The Girlfriend That Didn't Exist. Go watch it. Go watch that shit. I... Uh, Huh. But let that be an indication of the personal hierarchy. Some people are so self-centered that they don't even show remorse for anything other than getting caught. But that's neither here nor there. I want to focus on me right now. Just for right now. And I'm coming from an honest place when I say this shit. When you constantly get told no, every yes feel like the golden brick, feel like the yellow brick road from the Wizard of Oz. Every single one of them. Because you've been told no. No, 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 no. Ew, no, no. Uh, I, I don't, mm, you're not my, uh, I, mm, I, I mean, uh, when you get that shit for years and years, dog, you go fucking, you go crazy. Because you start to question yourself as though you did something wrong to create a negative outcome. But then, fast forward even a couple more years, me and the girl got engaged, broke up, lived life, did whatever. Do you think that when me and that girl broke up, that's where the game stopped? No. Then it was on to the next one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. But in the middle of all of these girls that said yes, there's like a hundred that said no. And 100 is a strong exaggeration. Because if I liked you, I kind of put pressure. I kind of was consistent toward your direction. So when I think about that, I think about how many times I get, fuck how many times I got told yes. Fuck how many times somebody held me down, had my back. I always, I can never forget that I was told no far more. I can never forget that. The yes feels alluring the yes feels alluring when everything else feels, when you always getting told no. Period. If you said, hey, can I join the Chicago Bulls? No. Can I join the Dallas Mavericks? No. Can I join the Denver Nuggets? No. Can I join the, can I, can I join like the fucking Charlotte Heat? Some shit, yes. The Charlotte Heat. You gotta make up a team in order for you to find a place to fit in. And that's what a lot of us do. We create, that's where the personal hierarchy comes in. We create, oh, well, I'm from Charlie and I know I'm fire, so I'm the Charlie Heat. And if you want to get down on my team, then you need to do what I do and act the way that I act to be the way that I am. Meanwhile, no one asked you about your fucking team. You're just mad that you got told no. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be. But I am going to say in that exact regard, when you get told no, that shit hurt. That shit carry with you. That shit moves with you. You feel like dog shit when you get told no. Can I get $20 to go to the movies? No. You can go in a room and go to sleep. You ain't even on punishment. You just your parents told you to go lay your ass down. Now you mad. <laughs> but I wanted to see Buzz Lightyear. Like, come on. <laughs> You're mad for what? Because you got told no. Men get told no far more than they get told yes. But the difference between men and women in that regard is that men are the ones always asking. So we're bound to find more no's than yeses because we're the ones always asking. Imagine being Michael B. Jordan... Idris Elba, if older than that, Denzel Washington, Will Smith. Imagine being a man that would be considered high profile and then being told no. That would fuck your day up. Like, what was the point of me doing all this then? But then you got to ask yourself this. Those high profile men, were they that way when they started out? No, they weren't. They didn't come out. They didn't come out the pussy getting pussy. That's not what happened. <laughs> That's not what happened, okay? 
They didn't just come out the womb, oh, I'm the shit and that's it and can't nobody tell me nothing. No, they came out, hey, can I can I get a, a dance? Possibly, maybe. They came out the same way because they had to figure it out. But within good timing, within good measure, within good discipline, they found their way and boom, high profile. They found their way. I'm not saying it's ideal. It happened the same exact way. It was the same exact thing every single time. No, but what I am going to say is in that regard, in that regard, they had enough discipline to meet that goal. Okay. They had enough discipline to meet that motherfucking goal. And a lot of people don't realize what that really means. They don't know what it means to be that level of disciplined. They don't know what it means to be that level of honest and dedicated to a craft. They don't know. They just want the result. And the issue that women are going to have with men is that they need to acknowledge that men have been told no so often on something as simple as a companion. Hey, can you be my friend? Nah, I, I, nah, I mean, I get, why would a woman give attention to a man that she has no interest in? But you know who does that? Women who know that men have something to provide. They'll be that man's friend. Oh, they'll be that man's. Hey, honey, how you doing, puppy? How you doing, baby? Oh, my, hey, big head. Like, you'll be that to the man who you think will provide for you. But for those young men that were not as cute, not as not as well structured, not as disciplined, the idea of a woman even going, hey, yo, check it out. You ain't got what I, you ain't got nothing for me, but I have love for you as a woman to a man. And we're not and I'm not your woman. I'm just a woman that loves you. That's that rarity, absolute rarity. Women say, oh, I want men to just be my friend. But then you dump all of the emotional companion based aspects of your life on that man and expect him to only be your friend and not be dedicated to you. But the very second that he says, oh, yeah, I would never date you. Now you feel a bit offended. Because you're in this personal hierarchy, you're in this personal pyramid that says that you could never, ever, 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 ever do wrong. And then when someone tells you no, now you feel offended. How does that make sense? You can't be offended about things that you created. You created that hierarchy. You got to understand that some people will not fit or adhere to it. It's just what it is. Whether you like it or not, it's completely fucking irrelevant to me. Banana chip. A walnut. <laughs> This shit's delicious. <laughs> I totally understand that everybody isn't the same. I totally understand that people are going to go through what they go through. I'm in total accordance with that. But when you create a personal hierarchy, people don't have to fit into it. Because regardless of what your hierarchy is, there's going to be somebody around it who wish you didn't tell you who wishes you didn't say no to them. That's how you end up with infiltrators, people that will adhere to your program long enough to get close to you just to become, you know, Brutus to Julius Caesar. Just to do that. And then not to even do anything with the dethroning of you from your own personal hierarchy. No, they did it just so you could shut the fuck up. They did it so that you could be, so that you could quiet your mouth. They did it so that they didn't have to hear you say or do things the way that they don't like. That's how you end up with, that's how you end up with men on child support who love their kids. 
All you did was enter into the system just to infiltrate what he was doing or what she was doing, whatever the case. You infiltrated just to cause destruction and leave. You didn't have an actual desire to build or help anything. You just wanted to destroy. You just wanted to destroy. And since you now are a destructive member of society, you need to carry that burden. But the very second you try to make that happen, that's when faggot, nigger, bitch, bitch ass, nigger, uh, who the fuck you think you is, misogynist, misogynoir. That's when all of the shaming, insults, and guilt and the need to be right come flying out y'all fucking mouth. At some point, at some point, point you got to be honest you got to be honest and I'm not even saying that to be facetious yet again I'm saying that to be real you better sit here and fucking tell me right the fuck now you better tell me right now that you got it all figured out because you got money no you don't because you still living in the same basic bitch ass fucking a personal hierarchy that you started in. You're still in the same space. You're still in the same place. You're still there. Nothing changed for you. And that's not even me being mean. You're still the same sack of shit you were before you got to the point where you're at. You never felt the need to truly improve yourself. You never felt the need to truly improve yourself because you never experienced a no. Not enough of them for you to learn. Not enough for you to try to do better. Not for you to change your game plan. Not enough for you to alter and move shit around. And we're not talking about jobs and shit because they can say no to, to anybody. Not can live with that because everybody gets told no equally for the most part at a job. But we're not going to pretend that a lot of nurses are women, a lot of secretaries are women. Men get to, or my fault, administrative assistants. Men get told no at those jobs more often because women provide a much more attractive look. Not in terms of, oh damn, she got some big ass titties. More like a, she's more feminine. She's motherly. She will be welcoming while men tend to be more aggressive and direct and straightforward. Both people can do the job, but which, which traits do you think are going to fall in line with someone who's an administrative assistant? You're basically signing up to be a yes man, and men are much more disagreeable than women. Is that not self-explanatory? When you not when you deal with uh, when you basically operate in life around all of your yeses, you never learn to grow from a no. When you make all of your decisions around yes, you never learn how to grow from a no. Them's the facts. Whether you like it or not, completely irrelevant to me. Don't give a fuck. Don't care at all. Nope. Because you know that it's the truth. You know it's true. But all of that and more to say this, because I really want to get into some gaming, right? If you always make your decisions around the yes, you'll never learn how to grow from a no. You'll never learn. And a lot of people are not grown and they're demanding nothing but yes. They're demanding, yeah, oh, you mean yes? Oh, you mean yeah? Oh, you mean yes? No. Is that French for yes? Like, people only want to hear yes. Men don't get a choice. We just eat the no and figure it out. We eat the no and we figure it out. Okay? 
this is not to create the argument of, well, in today's world, what about grape and what about assault? It ain't got nothing to do with none of that. Listen to what I'm saying. When you spend the bulk of your life working around a yes, you never learn how to grow around a no or grow from a no. You never fucking learn. You do not learn. You cannot learn. It is physically impossible for you to go down that road of learning in that way. Two plus two equals noodle. Yup. Three plus three equals fish back. Yup. Nine times nine equals 27. N no, no, it doesn't. What? Y'all, don't nine times nine equal 27? Yeah, see, you never learn. You can't learn that way. You can't learn when everybody's telling you yes. And therefore, if you've never been told no, or if the no's you've been told were strictly about in a business sense, you still ain't learn nothing. You learn how to grow in business maybe, but you haven't learned how to grow as a person. You've grown your representation, you've grown your brand, but you didn't grow you. But you think because your results are good that you're good and that's false. Drug dealers make millions. There are some drug dealers that make millions, almost close to billions. There's probably a murderer out there who's had a job better than you've ever thought to have. But it's all about growth as you or growth of you as a person. If the only thing you're focused on is growth by proxy and the proxy being, oh, well, I know that I'm grown because my my job says I'm grown. I make a million and all I do, I, all I do is just sit around all day. Yeah, but you take that away and we're still left with the sack of shit who's still stuck in their own personal hierarchy. If you're going to stay stuck in the hierarchy, then none of your outside growth makes a difference. If your hierarchy can't include society, if it literally has to abolish the thing you live in, then essentially you haven't grown because you're only surrounding yourself with those that say yes. And that's the difference between men and women, really. Men know what it's like to deal with no and deal with it often. That's why when we get when we start getting told yes regularly, while we value it in the beginning, we realize, oh damn, all right, cool. I, just, I mean, look, I just wanted to hit the goal. I mean, I didn't think it was gonna make it this far, fuck it. I mean, the yes becomes less important over time because now we know, oh, okay, it just took time. It just took time. You think the ones coming after us, the 30 something year olds or the 40 something year olds, you think that the ones coming after us and get hip to that game already? Oh, you telling me no right now. All right, cool. Say less or nah, that's cool. Or for them to be like, hey, yo, that's cat, but it's cool though. Like that's, I, I see you though. I see you though. Binoculars in the tree, bitch. I see you fine. You know, Hannah and an Asian girl in the window get spied on. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> but that is what comes with the territory, right? That is what comes with the game. Now, a lot of people may not like it being called a game, but I mean, it is what it is, is it not? It is what the fuck it is. It is what it is. And I'm not saying that to be prestigious, not at all. I'm saying it to be honest. You have to get out of your personal hierarchy because the world don't work that way. It doesn't revolve around you as an individual when there's over 324 million of us. So you better say and tell me that your world matters more than everybody else's. Who do you think you are besides a jackass? Please enlighten me. Please enlighten me. And that's just, that's as honest as it can possibly get. It's, it is as honest as it can possibly get. 
I need people to stop playing with people. And I need people to stop being a jackass. Okay? I need people to be a little more intelligent so that we can actually progress and develop the society that we claim that we want. Because right now, what we're doing ain't it. <laughs>